Listen. There's some people that are waiting for, to follow you too. But you have to make sure you are in position because they're not going to follow you if you're not in position. People follow us all over this place. Yes. But we can't get them to follow us to church. Oh, uh, let's leave that one. Uh, don't give me no amen there. <laughs> Hallelujah. And the Bible says, and they came into the house, and Jesus said unto them, Bless ye, bless ye that I am, believe ye that I am able to do this. They said unto him, Yea, Lord. Then touch ye their eyes, saying, According to your faith, be it unto you. Now, you know what their faith was? See, we know that the Bible said faith cometh by hearing and hearing the word of God. But faith without works is dead. Those men's faith was their persistence and they, how they pursue him, their action, because in spite of all the obstacles, in spite they couldn't see, in spite they were stumbling along, they believe, amen. So because they believe their action, they put their action to what they believe and they wait. So we see their faith now. We see their works and they're stepping and going. Many of us here in Christian Dome, not only here at Lighthouse, but also at Nugent, we say we have faith. But our actions speak different. That's right, that's right. That's real faith for those blind men. Because they went through, come hell or high water, they were determined to go, amen, so that they can get into Jesus' presence. Yes, yes, yes. Turn your name and say, neighbor. Don't let that little thing body. You know, it, it, it's, it's Papa Sam, it's Papa Sam singing that song, says, let me pass. Let me praise my God. Amen. Don't let a little thing bother you. Amen. That little stumbling block, that little stepping stone, yeah. somebody mash your pawn, you get mad, you turn back. Amen. You were the one that's going to miss your miracle, Amen. not the person that mash your pawn. Yeah. You were going to miss your miracle, not the person that mash your pawn. You were the one that's going to be on the position, not the person that mash your pawn. I 
come into church because of her. I was just playing a nice boy with the church, calling her to church. Praise the Lord. But I was looking at it. Praise the Lord. Ah, hallelujah. Six years, seven years, I stayed in church, nothing happening. I wasn't about to give up my investment. No. All that time and everything that I could just turn away, some some little nappy head boy would come down. Can you imagine if I if I knocked up the preacher like that and I saw her sitting there with a set call up what I miss? Anyway, tell somebody don't give up. Let's let's look at let's look at another story, not individual in the Bible. They can say Matthew. Matthew chapter 15. Let us see what happened Hallelujah. in this story. Because, again, it is being in place. It's not giving up. It's not being, you know, detoured by some little, little nonsense. Amen? Some little trivia. It's purposing in your heart that I'm going to continue. Amen. I'm going to press. Yes. Yes. Matthew chapter 15. Yes. Hallelujah. And let's... Let's start from verse 21. I love this story too because it tells it tells us about you know the society we live in today and the society that they lived back then. In today's society, if people say certain things to you, amen, especially Pastor Cameron get up here and say certain things to you as an individual, you will leave church. You want another man of God lose his mind or something. But let us look at the story. Because we have to you we have to use these people as examples. Amen? Amen. Matthew 15, verse 21. It says, Then Jesus went thence and departed into the coast of Tyre and Sodom. And behold, a woman of Canaan came out of the same coast and cried unto him, saying, Have mercy on me, O Lord, thou son of David. My daughter is grievously vexed with a devil. But he answered her not a word. In other words, you know, I've had this happen to me, where some of my members, because I, I a weak person, I ain't calling. They say, eh, the pastor never care. He ain't calling. Yeah. Or there are some of them where sometimes you're trying to make some people some good examples. And say, oh, well, you know, sister, so so was so so, and brother, so 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 so. After church, ten of them young say, but why you call me? Why you call them on me? He should have called me. Should have called. Or they're trying to get an audience with you, and because you're so busy, you're dealing with other things and yeah. stuff and so on, they start to take offense because they say, see, he ignoring me. Yeah. And then guess what? They left church. Not only they would they leave church, they were going to tell others, oh, the man of God is a hypocrite. He's only for some, and he's not for the others. But Jesus didn't even answer this woman, and he is Jesus. The Bible said, and he answered not a word. Mm. And his disciples now, amen, like the elders, the deacons, and them, amen, come to Pastor Cameron and says, man, send this woman away, or send this man away, he's just bothering us. And then they said, the whole church is hypocrites. You know? The deacons and the elders and the deaconesses and all that stuff ganged up against me. But he answered, quite not a word, and his disciples came and besought him, saying, Send her away, for she cried after us. But he answered and said, I am not sent but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Now by then we should think the woman is gone, but she's still there. She ain't given up, amen? And, and the Bible says, but... Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Then came she, verse 25, then came she and worshipped him, saying, Lord, help me. This woman ain't going nowhere. She doesn't care what's happening, but this is the biggie. Now this is Jesus speaking. But he answered and said, It is not meat to take the children's bread and cast it to the dogs. Now we know, and I know your pastor is a scholar, that the Gentiles were called dogs. Then. But let's forget the kind of stuff. Just indulge me a little bit. Jesus called this woman a dog. 
And she was a dog, because she's a Gentile. Now you know, if the pastor said to some of us, you know, because of our attitude and who we are, and someone says, you hypocrite, you need to repent. Well, oh my God, I call a hypocrite. <laughs> people will leave church. People will be people like, oh my God. You imagine your pastor coming to you with some strong word, calling you who you are. If God revealed it to him and he tells you it, you'll be mad. Some of us, we only want to hear those nice preaching. Yes. Oh, I'm blessed. Going in, coming out. <laughs> and you're not paying your time, you're robbing God. I'm blessed. No, we ought to tell you, you are cursed. You are cursed with a curse. Amen. If you rob me, God, you're cursed. Yes. Yes. I ain't going back to the church because the pastor preaches negative. No, it's not negative, it's the truth. Amen. Amen. It's the truth. Amen. You and giving, you and supporting, you and helping, you're doing nothing. And the pastor get up and start preaching what is truth. And you mad at him because you're not hearing, you're healed, you're blessed. You're going to have it pressed down, shaking, get run over. But yeah, you robbing God? Yes. No, you're a curse. Oh, okay. Dr. Campbell is going to straighten that one up when you get back. I'm glad he's not here. But look at what this woman said. Verse 27. And she said, true Lord. That's what I love about her. Yesterday we were um, driving, going out. Uh, my wife and the children and my oldest son, Daniel. Apparently, my wife asked him to do something. And... Um, he gave her conflicting information. So while we were going in the van, he keep insisting and saying, no, I can do that. And you know, I said, Daniel, hold up a minute. Let me show you how you handle authority. Amen? And this is good for all of us. So whenever you're a subordinate, whenever there's someone over you in authority, you don't want to get into an argument trying to tell them you're right and they're wrong. Yes. The best way to solve that problem I said, Daniel, all what you have to say to your mom, mom, you know what? I am sorry. I probably made a mistake if I said that. Yeah. Case closed. Yeah. Yeah. But some of us, we got a bad attitude. We want to let people know that I'm right, you're wrong. We don't care if you're mama, if you're daddy, if you're the pastor, whatever. Sometimes our children want to argue with us, tell us like they like it is. Yeah, I'm going to tell you. I Man, listen, in my time growing up, I would already have dentures by now. Uh -huh. <laughs> I'd have had dentures. I argue with my mama even if she's wrong. That's right. Amen. Man, I'll tell you what, I'll have more top and bottom. Body grip inside of hell. Trying to bite the apple and embarrass for another apple and dentures on it. Oh. 